Hello again everybody, Matthew Durr here bringing you a quick hands-on look of Venus Optics' Laowa 105mm f2 T3.2 Smooth Transfocus Lens. Now this will not be an unboxing video because those are boring. Instead we're going to be taking a look at the lens hands-on. Now this is an all black metal bodied lens. It's manufactured pretty tightly, it feels very good in the hand. It's very heavy though, at about 745 grams or a bit over a pound and a half. And the focus ring, as you can see here, is very wide at about 2 inches. It has a very generous 270 degree travel from infinity all the way to about 3 feet, just normal for 105 millimeter lenses. Now, the 270 mil, uh, degrees of travel is really good for precise focus acquisition, but is very bad for quick focusing, especially if you're dealing with stuff that's from a far distance to close, close to far. It takes a very long time to get from infinity to close back to infinity. You may miss a shot if you have to do something like sports or maybe tracking uh, pets or kids, things like that, if you want to use this lens. But not only is the slow focus travel bad for fast focus acquisition, but also the appetization element that you can look up in the link in the description for how this lens makes it a really unique images, also reduces the effective light that reaches the sensor by almost a stop and a half compared to the actual aperture value. See, although this lens produces a depth of field of an f2 lens, the maximum amount of light that can hit the sensor is T3.2, which is about a half stop over F2.8, if you want to try to get into some equivalence. But as far as actual shooting is concerned, when you're in good daylight or when you're shooting wide open uh, in anything before sunset about, you can typically stay at about ISO 100 and still get a decent enough shutter speed to handhold it. For portraits and stuff, if you want to be using uh, speed lights and stuff like that, you'll always be able to stay at ISO 100 and not have to worry about the effective uh, light transmission value. So, in shooting, uh, the lens is insanely sharp. I've already seen a couple reviews of this lens online uh, from, I believe, Photozone and uh, ePhotoZine, I believe. And their IMA test results showing the sharpness figures of the lens are outstanding. And I haven't been able to shoot too much with this lens yet because it actually came here to my house <laughs> the day I left for my trip to Osaka. So I've only shot with it about three or four times so far. I haven't made too many images. But the images I have made with it so far have been amazingly tack sharp, straight from wide open aperture. And what's really unique about this lens shooting wide open compared to my Nikkors, there's no veiling haze, there's no uh, contrast loss shooting wide open. It's just nice and tack sharp straight from the get-go. So what this means for me, as many of you know, I'm a shallow depth of field junkie, I can shoot wide open, whether it's f2 or t3.2, as much as I want to and still get really good sharp results. So the only reason I would ever need to stop down is if I needed to get more depth of field for things like landscapes or anything of that matter where I need, I need more, more depth of field. Shooting at uh, f5.6 will typically get you some really good depth of field uh, if you're focusing near infinity. And that's typically where I leave it for most landscape shots. But if it's starting to get low light, I can always just bring it back down to f2. And really, if, it's, if everything in the picture is near infinity, I don't have to worry too much because I know it'll be very sharp. So. As far as the other handling aspects, the lens does come with its own little plastic lens hood. I wish it was metal like the rest of the lens, but it goes on pretty simply. You just find the hole here, and then it has a little soft lock right on there. Increases the length of the lens a little bit, but it's still not too bad. It balances decently well on the NEX7 camera and balances even better on a Nikon DSLR, which this is an F-mount lens. It also comes in many other mounts, including E-mount, uh, Canon EF mount, and I believe Pentax, which is nice. Uh, unfortunately, with the lens hood, uh, it locks in softly, and unfortunately, it has a little bit of play before it finally starts unlocking. I wish it had a little bit more tight tolerances, because this might become a problem in the long run for the, the lens hood accidentally sliding off, but that is yet to be seen. Uh, for when you want to store the lens, you can store it reversed like this. Um, since it's a very generously long lens hood, you will not be able 
to focus it or use the lens at all when you take it out of the bag unless you remove this hood. Uh, when you take a look inside the lens, it comes with a nice pinch style lens cap. Thank you, Venus Optics. Uh, and a rear cap, of course. When you look through the lens, very clear, good and wide aperture. And as you see here, it has two focus rings. One that controls the T value, which is a smooth ring, does not have any click stops. Really good for cinematography, things like that. And the F stop ring, which does have click stops at every aperture. Now, one thing I noticed with this lens that I did not like, let me see if I can show it here in the video. As you stop down the lens with the F values, I'm right now at F11, F16, and F22. When I try to go in between F22 and F20, and, uh, sorry, excuse me, F22 and F16, the lens aperture gets stuck, unfortunately. When you go back to F2, though, it all opens up just fine. I'm not sure if this is due to sample variation or some other design flaw, so I'll reach out to Lawa to take a look at that. Granted, you really shouldn't be shooting this lens at F16 or F22 anyway, so in actual use, this will be a non-issue. I should have a post on my website, probably when I get back from a trip here coming up, with a little bit more hands-on impressions in writing. But for now, this is a quick look of the very nice 105mm f2 T3.2 smooth transfocus. Probably going to be my new favorite lens for a very long time, not only due to its shooting experience, but also its bokeh rendering, which I'll go into more detail on my site. Thank you for watching, and you all, as always, have a nice day.